Well, hello, everybody watching on Pivot Shift Ahead. It's your friend James Shaw, and I trust you're doing okay. You know, when we started this Facebook community, uh, oh, I don't know, in March of 2020, so uh, what, two and a half years ago, uh, the goal was for us to learn from each other so we can thrive in any market. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn from each other so we can continue to thrive. And, and what we've seen happen over the last while is the conversation we're having with our sellers right now about pricing has totally changed. And today we're going to talk about how we do it at a high level. And I'm excited to welcome my friend Terry Story. Terry, how you doing? I'm great, James. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you for doing this because you're out in the field every day making it happen and and you found a way to walk through pricing with sellers right now that's starting to connect. So that's what you're going to share with everyone today. Before we do that though, will you introduce yourself, tell them who you are and where you are and a little bit about you. Sure. My name is Terry Story and I'm in Boca Raton, Florida. I've been in this market center. This is my fifth year. I've been in real estate 34 years with another company uh, in, in total. Uh, I run a small, profitable MREA uh, team and uh, just I'm happy to be here, be part of this group. Oh, we're happy you're here. Yeah, you uh, are grossing a million bucks a year selling houses. You're going to hit that again this year? You're on pace for it? We're, we're on target to do it. It'll be our third year. Third straight year. And it's amazing. And I'm so proud of you for it. And and so you're going on a lot of appointments. You do a, you operate a very big business. You've been in the business a long time. So you've experienced some shifts in the market before. You said, what, five years at KW, 34 years at another a company. Total, yeah, a total. So 29. A total of 34 years. years. Okay. Not that old, James. No, I wasn't. I thought, <laughs> thought maybe you got your license when you graduated from kindergarten. But here's the thing. So in 34 years in the business, you've seen many markets. Yes. Uh, including the Great Recession, which was the biggest decline in real estate home values that the industry had ever seen. You and I are both in Florida, which were impacted a ton by, you know, through that shift. And so you've learned a lot of things. So I guess the first thing would be, uh, as people are going and meeting with sellers right now, we as agents probably just need to not freak out. Would you, would you say that to start things off? Absolutely. And it starts with ourselves. We have to feel comfortable with what we're telling our sellers and we have to believe it. And it's, it's not only a matter of knowing, well, first you need to know the facts and know what really is going on in your own market. Know the, know the numbers so you can speak with confidence because the sellers are looking to us to be the expert and guide them. They're scared. A lot of them are really, really scared. They're upset that we've, um, we believe we've already passed the peak from based on our numbers that we're looking at. We, nobody knows what the future is gonna bring, but based on what we do know right now, a lot of sellers are looking at their neighbor's house and saying, wow, he got he's getting over one hundred fifty thousand dollars more than I can. Why is that? So they're pointing the blame on a lot of times us as agents. And you have to be able to defend yourself and say, you know what? This isn't our doing. This is just a change in the marketplace. And let me explain to you why and how and walk the walk them through that. And they'll self-discover and understand. And then the pressure is no longer on you because James, nothing worse than being in this, uh, a market like this. And we start to accumulate, accumulate listings. And as we get more and more listings or the sellers are uh, demanding more of us and it, and it gets very uncomfortable when we're so used to selling a house in a day that we have to wait 90 uh, 90 days, 120 days, maybe even longer. And so we have to stay in relationship with, with these sellers every step of the way. And they want to know what you're doing. And if the communication isn't there, guess what? They're going to be firing you. Actually, that's part of the reason why I got highly motivated because I was just recently fired. Um, and it, it, I, I realized, you know, we're really in that messy middle where we didn't explain to some of our sellers what was going on because we didn't know what was going on. And so in, for some of our transactions, we're in that sloppy uh, middle. So I actually have gone back to every single seller, sat down and shared with them what is going on. And now going forward, you know, the pricing strategy is so critical so that they understand straight from the beginning where we're at what we anticipate is happening and keeping them apprised every single step of the way. Yeah, it sounds like it's really important to get the seller engaged with what's going on in the market so that they don't blame you, that they have a true understanding of the market, right? 
Yeah, and not only that, they're going to start asking you if if you don't if you're not able to show what it is that you're doing for them and and articulate it well and and share with them, you know, certain things are out of our our um, hands. Part of marketing is pricing, and that's a really critical uh, point that needs to be emphasized. Pricing is marketing and part of it. And if that's not conveyed properly, they're going to just continuously ask, well, I want you to do another open house. I want you to write an ad in the Wall Street Journal. I want you to fly airplanes above my house. You know, they're, they're going to become unrealistic about their demands and what they want you to do in order to get their home sold. Yeah. Okay. So, the, the you know, a year ago, Terry, um, when we were talking about pricing, the conversation may be like, hey, do you think we should get that? We could get this. And you'd say, sure, let's see what happens. And Pick a number. Right. And so that's not happening anymore. And in shift, page 138, uh, Gary, J, and Dave say, continually changing market conditions and circumstances make pricing a skill and a science. And then he says, we need to do research, analysis, and have judgment in pricing. And he says, quite frankly, that isn't evident in most agents listing presentations. That's what it says here in the book. You have really started to be very specific about pricing and walk people through a conversation that, that gives them data, that, sh that shows that you've done research, that has some analysis to help make some, some good judgments and make good decisions. So do you want to walk us through this? Because this is something you're doing. You're using graphs and, and walking through a conversation. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing and uh, and then we'll go from there sure well basically it's what i'm doing is this uh, series of four graphs if you will and it just starts off asking them where do you think we are in the market and we draw a little squiggly line and show and and ask them to point to where they think we are are we um, rising market have we peaked are we declining and have them put on that line where that's at most of the people are going to put the the x mark right off the top of of the um, graph. And then you just walk them through it. And, and James, it's, it's so hard to try to, uh, tell you all about it. We will, we will provide it so that it, someone can see exactly what I'm referring to. Actually, I've got it right here. So basically I'm showing them this little graph. Where are we on, on this chart? And then from there, um, they understand so, that Terry, real quick. So then you have them like, put an X at the spot that, where they think we are? Hand them the pen. Where do you think we are in the market? Where do most people put their X? I'm curious. They go just right over the top. Well, how powerful is that, Terry, that they're already, they're admitting right in front of you that, that this rapid increase in home values that we've seen over the last couple of years, that, that rapid increase is over. They're, they're telling you that up front. Right. And so they're the ones saying that. So then you can take it to the next thing. Then you can ask them, how long do you think it's going to take till we get to the bottom? Of course, none of us know. And nor do we know how long it's going to take to you know, go back up. So when you look at this, James, and you're at the top, how long is it going to take to come? How long does it take to come down to the bottom and then back up? And then if, if they believe that we're really here, is it five years to get back to where we are? I don't know. Nobody really knows. So, so it goes back to, it always goes back to their motivation. How long are you willing to wait, Mr. Seller, to get those numbers that your neighbor got a couple of months ago? We don't know the answer to that. Is it five years? Is it 10 years? Is it three years? We don't know. So they self-discover. We can't reverse the time right now. So we're on this little, little roller coaster ride. We know that we've left the top. We know that it'll go down how far we don't know, and then it'll come back up. That's what markets do. So they Sounds all like you're asking a lot. I'm that. sorry. Pardon my interruption. I'm so sorry. But it just said, and by the way, we have a role play of you doing this, Terry, that if you're watching on Facebook, we will put in the comments so that people can watch that. And, and if you're watching on another platform, it'll be embedded in with the article that you're reading. But the but it, it sounds like that this is really engaging and the questions that you ask your seller as you're going through this graph are really important. Exactly. And and why they're moving. You know, if you think about it, James, a lot of people are downsizing. They want to they're, they're wanting to capitalize and get as much money out of their house as they can. Well, think about it. If they're if they're moving and staying in the same market area, 
all they're really doing is transferring their equity from one place to another. And that's the part that I really emphasize to them. You're not losing money. You're just moving your equity from one place to another. And Mr. Seller, if you're downsizing, would you be better off staying in your million dollar home or making your move now to your $500,000 home? If the market were to continue to decline, where are you going to, where are you going to uh, lose the most amount of money? In the million dollar home at 10% down or $500,000 home at 10%. And they'll usually say, oh, oh, that makes sense. Maybe I should be putting my home on the market now, get out of it and go some and park it someplace else. Because that's all it really is. It's just a movement. It's a chess game, moving your money. It's the most Boca conversation I've ever heard. Do you want to move your money from your million dollar house? Or 150,000. <laughs> right. That's so good. It's just a reminder that Terry's in Boca. Okay, so so the the uh okay, I love this. You are opening their eyes to something and Terry, these are not conversations you've had. You haven't talked to anybody like this in a decade. No, I haven't. And so I had to um refresh my mind and go think about 2006, 7, 8, 9. And those were great years. It was, it was the rough years, but it was a time that you can take market share. And I recognize that and know that. And that's why I'm really, really polishing up my skills on this because I plan to take market share, more market share. That's my goal. Yeah, yeah no, no doubt about it. I mean, transition opportunity shows up in transition and that's what we're in. Okay, so they see this graph. You're asking, where do you think we are? A majority of people you're saying that they're, they're on, the, on the opposite side of the peak, right? Is what they're guessing. What about for the people who go, I'm sure you have people that go, oh, gosh, I don't even think we've hit the peak yet, man. It feels like we're, does that happen? And what do you say if it does? I, honestly, I have never had anyone say that to me. Uh, they all seem to be just right. Some of them go down a little deeper than I would think they would. I'd say 90% just go right off the off the top of the hill. I love it. Okay, now then what happens? So we have this conversation. We're showing this graph. We're checking. They're going just past the peak. And, right. and so we're going great. So now we know what direction price home prices are going. You've set the stage that they aren't going to get what their neighbor got, which is the yep. number one objection we hear right now. What happens next? So then we go to this next, next little graph. And really what this is, is a um, exaggeration of that down mark. So I'll usually just show them all I've done is taken the line and exaggerating this down market, right? So if you do this, it's called chasing the market. And if we priced it just above the market, God, this is hard to do upside down. If we priced it just above the market, what happens is we'll go on the market for 30 days, adjust the price, go on the market for 30 days, adjust the price, go another 30 days, adjust the price. We don't want to do this. And this is what happens. We call this chasing the market if we miss the mark. So if we miss the mark, we need to, uh, you know, see where we are in the market and price it more effectively, either right on the line or right below the line. And by doing so, instead of selling it here, we would sell it here, which is a lot greater than selling it down here. And if we end up doing the chasing of the market, you're end up, you're going to end up netting less and, and selling for less. And that's what we don't want to do. So they, they understand that as well, that, um, you know, time is money and uh, the, your enemy of being on the market is time. So the yeah. faster it's priced right and, and sells, the better off you are in a declining market. If this we're actually page, declining. This is page 146 and 147 of shift is what that is. Those graphs look very similar to that about the cost of overpricing in a, in a stable market versus the cost of overpricing in a shifting one and chasing the market down. So Terry, when you walk through that, the goal it sounds like is to get them to keep them from asking, well, can we try it at such and such a price and see what happens? Is, is that the goal here? And that's the goal. And, and you can say, listen, we can do that, but, but this is what's going to happen. And they get that and they don't want to do that. And it, it all goes back to their how you know their timeline how much time do they want to take to try to get it sold are they in a hurry and are they looking to to sell it for the most amount of money because these charts are designed to get them the most amount of money and to stay one step ahead of the market when you look at your numbers for example you know if, if you really know your numbers for example i know that in um 
Boca Raton, we had 775 homes for sale back in March. Now we're at 1,200. And our absorption rate has gone from 1.2 months to 2.2 months. So what, what's really happening, Mr. Seller, is the buyer now is starting to feel like he's in control. He now has, more, he or she, has more opportunity. They're viewing all the homes that are on the market. They're watching the price adjustments and they're in no hurry. There's, there's, there, if every day that uh, they wait, a new one comes on the market or another house adjusts. So if you really want to sell and capitalize on the market, we've got to get a little bit ahead of it and you will be the winner. You want to be the one who sets the new uh, price versus waiting for another neighbor to sell who may sell it for less than what you would be willing to sell. And now you're going to potentially sell for less than him because it starts to go downward slowly. This isn't a cliff or anything like that. It's still a seller's market. What's interesting, uh, Terry, is I was going to say just that. It's still a seller's market, but it's a seller's market. And by the way, it's a tight seller's market. Mm -hmm. You got two months worth of inventory in Palm Beach County. That's a tight seller's market. Um, and yet it feels like a buyer's market. Like it feels like all of a sudden the buyers are like, look, all that stuff we were doing six months ago, we're not doing any of that now. You people are crazy. So yeah. the price is becoming important. And Gary and Dave and Jay teach us in the book that pricing is a strategic conversation. It's not a value one. It's not how much is your house worth. That'll be determined by what the buyer's willing to pay and what the seller's willing to accept. But, but you're talking about positioning. We haven't talked about positioning on the market and strategy around that since 2019, Terry's story. So here comes the strategy part. This is the fun one. This is my fishing analogy. So basically what I do is I compare, and by the way, I can't take credit for all of this. Um, Andrew Barber, my, my uh, OP is the one who put this all together. I just ripped off and duplicated it and put my own little spins on it. But anyway, going back to my little fishing analogy, I have three fishermen, fishermen one, two, and three. I literally draw this out. I don't bring these charts. This is just charts that I, I just made up. But I, I draw this out, and you'll see that when I do the role play. But I'll, I'll draw it out in front of them. And fisherman number one, I ask them, who's going to catch all the fish? And they can look at the picture, and they're going to see that fisherman three is. Pricing is counterintuitive. And what we mean by that is we think we're going to get the highest price by asking the most amount of money. But in reality, the lower the price, the more that you, more um, more more you're going to get for your house, like the fisherman. Now, fisherman number one, we know when we're when we're like fisherman number one, we're not get, we're getting very very little activity. So if you're going like 14 days and you're getting very very little activity, you're like fisherman one. Your bait is up too high. Our pricing is too high. Fishing fisherman number two, you're you're getting eight to ten showings but no offers. This is actually the most dangerous zone to be in because you feel like you're getting, you're having this activity, yet you're not getting the results. Number two is actually helping number three because the fish will go up, sniff the bait of number two, go back down to number three because that's where all the, the people are and the fish are. And everybody wants what everybody else wants, right? And they're and they're going to put the offers on, on number three. So number two feels like you're, you're in the right spot, but you're probably still priced a little too high. So every time I share something like this with the sellers, the sellers, I always say to them, now remember my fishing analogy. How many showings have we had in the last two weeks? And, and they know. I said, okay, so we're probably about 10% too high, depending on your market, depending on the price point. If you're fisherman number two, maybe about 5%. Again, you have to know your market. Uh, to make those determinations. So you will sell the house when you're right where the market is. And that's the important part. And we'll know what that's like based on the activity that we're getting. You, This is great. And uh, this is one people you want to go back and watch. And again, we've got a, a role play Terry did of doing this presentation that, again, if you're watching it on Facebook, it'll be in the comments. If you're watching on another platform, it'll be embedded in wherever you're watching. The the, um, it, it, it sounds like that drawing this out as opposed to showing a slide, because I feel like we have a lot of people that say, can I have those slides? I actually don't think that helps you. I think 
drawing it out, like drawing an up-down market, where do you think we are? Drawing, okay, I'm going to draw the ocean and here's the boat and here's the, like drawing that out. How, how impactful is it to draw that out instead of just showing them a slide? They're so engaged. They're like, you know, hanging over the sheet. They're, they're just blown away. And they're, it's so more, su such more engagement than showing them a slide. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't show them a slide. You, you really have your to own try. kind of understanding or whatever to, to help you. Right. Um, okay. So, so this market can be very overwhelming for people. Mm -hmm. There are, in fact, I was talking with Kent Temple. He's master faculty in KW, you know, Kent. And he said that he had seen a report that 85% of NAR members right now have never experienced a buyer's market. Now you and I have, but 85%, there's 1.5 million members of NAR and they're going 85% of them have never experienced a buyer's market. They're overwhelmed. They're stressed out. What would you suggest to those agents? Just hang in there and, you know, just keep working with the buyers, uh, practice your scripts. It's really, really important to know your scripts, handle the objections. And the more confidence that you have in yourself, it, it, it it's conveyed to people. I'm just always dumbfounded by, you know, watching new, newer agents and what, what comes out of some of their mouths, especially when I'm showing property. And I just sit there and I'm like, I, I, I can't believe they just said that. Um, there's only so many objections. And if you know the basic objections and learned a couple of different ways that you can handle them, um, you become an expert real fast. And when, when they, when you believe in them yourself, it's conveyed to the listener. So, uh, and, and no data, data is so important. You sound, you know, knowledge is one thing, but it, it, if you can say, listen, there's 1200 homes on the market, you know, in our, our marketplace, it, it, they're on the market for 40 days. You know, if you can give actual stats, you, you just elevated your game. I ran into a person the other day. They said, we learned in the last 90 seconds more from you than any other realtor that we've seen in the last two weeks. And I was just telling them about the, the um, area in the house and some of the stats. And we're doing a buyer consult tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Hmm. Um, there Knowing your stuff matters and providing perspective, too. I love that you, you'd said, OK, a few months ago, we had 1.1 months worth of inventory. Now we have 2.2 months. So the amount of inventory has doubled. We had 700 for sale. We've got 1,300 for sale, whatever your number was. So, so providing perspective around where the market's been and where it's going is really important. And, and who's your audience? Are you talking to a buyer or are you talking to a seller? And the way that you convey it's going to be different. When you're talking to a buyer who's been really frustrated, it's like, hey, hey we have a lot more opportunities now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and the, you can get them back excited because there's a lot of buyer fatigue. They got beat up really bad. Yep. And, and the buyers are, are playing hardball. I mean, I can't yeah. believe the hardball that they're playing. They, they and think still a super tight seller's market. market. That's what's weird about this is this super tight seller's market. Outside of pricing, are there other objections that sellers are telling you that, that you think agents should be prepared for? Not really. Um, they're, you know, they're still comparing. They're, they are uh, shopping agents. And I, I think just being prepared, what are you going to do for them? What are you going to do that's different than other realtors? Are you, do you have your value proposition? What are the five things or seven things that you do, do different than, than your competition and be really prepared to answer those questions. A lot of sellers, you know, we, we call them the three P's, you know, put in the MLS, put up, uh, do professional fo photos and then pray that somebody else brings the buyer and sells it. And, and you just have to know what you bring to the table and and share it with them hmm. uh last thing and uh for you and that's this the 34 years of experience um you've been through buyers markets before by the way we're not in a buyer's market nobody's saying that but you've been through more challenging markets uh before mm -hmm. what um what benefits have you seen from a market that shifts the best benefit is taking over market share and when i Back in 2006, seven, eight, that's when I really started taking over market share in my my community. So the opportunities are there uh, when the market shifts. What happens is a lot of newer people will get out of the business. A lot of people will, will retire and uh, cream rises to the top. So a lot of the sellers, they become 
really serious. I just had one the other day says I'm firing my realtor. He's not doing anything for me. I need somebody who's going to get the job done. And it's easy to go in and get these. You know, a lot of people just list with their friend, their friend's sister, their, their friend's mother's brother's sister, just because for whatever reason, and they're not the most professional or uh, experienced or even right for the job, but they just hire them just because they're in relationship with them. And relationships really important. So just because you might be the smartest person or most experienced person doesn't mean you're going to get it. Uh, and, and I do have to fight for listings um, often, you know, to somebody who is just in relationship and better relationship with with the seller than I am. So it's yeah. really matter just being really, really smart and, and know know your game. That's where your conversation, it sounds like you have the same conversation over and over right now. Where do you think we are, right? What direction do we think we're going? How long do you think this time will last? I mean, you gave us all the questions to ask. Why, why are you selling? Well, motivation is big um, because we, we've got to understand why. How, how much of a, you know, how, how important is it for you to know that? And how much do you utilize it? when you start talking about price, because they're probably disappointed, right? They're going, well, I should have sold six months ago. Well, yeah, but you didn't have that need to sell six, six months ago and you do now. So right. yeah, let's touch on that about understanding their motivation and why it's so important. And bringing it back to them. You know, it's like uh, you had said to me, Mr. Seller, you wanted to um, buy a house by the lake or whatever it may be. And just re-remind them of their dreams because we all have dreams. Most uh, and a lot of the sellers, James, that I'm finding right now, there's a whole host of them that don't have to sell and they put it on the market to capitalize on the market. Um, and so I'm having to revisit those sellers and and let go of some of the sellers. If they're not that motivated to sell, I don't want to invest a lot of time in this. I'm better off tr uh, tr looking for a, a new motivated seller than dealing with someone. Well, if I don't get my number, I'm not going to sell because they're the ones who are going to be the most demanding on you. Good stuff. I'm glad your OP helped shared that with you to help you out. Andrew's Andrew Barber's awesome, and uh, you're in a great market center group. Um, and and then of course your 34 years of experience is helping you right now. And yet this is available to any agent. Any agent can have this conversation. Any agent can pull the data. Any agent can look smarter by doing it this way. Terry, anything you want to add before we kick it? No, I think that's great. Just uh, go go get your unfair share. Now's the opportunity, right, to go do it. Go gain market share. Terry Story, thanks for joining us to share this. Everybody watching, thank you. Again, if you want to see a role play of Terry doing it, you can see it in the comments or embedded in the article that you're looking at. Uh, and just go out and get listings, right? That's the name of the game right now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.